I did want to record this video where I share what a person should do and what they should understand if they end up with a sudden case of severe neck pain, severe back pain, because what you do in the first 24 to 48 hours can determine whether you get better quickly or if this becomes something really severe where you feel frantic and you feel like you have to head into one of those clinics. And so first off, I wanna explain exactly what causes severe back pain or sudden severe neck pain. I'll go over what you should do during the day and during the night if that happens. And I'll go over the, the stretches and then I'll explain a little bit more about what sets a person up for a severe uh, sudden onset low back pain or neck pain. And so essentially, uh, the thing that would cause the sudden severe low back pain or neck pain, if you look at the spine, your spine has 132 joints that are supposed to all move with these nice smooth movements. And that requires nerves to, to send messages up to the brain about what's going on and then to send clear messages to these muscles that are in alongside the spine. And so what happens is a person, um, let's say that you're down in the basement, um, your, your spouse is getting sick of you uh, doing your work on the kitchen table, so you're trying to clean out this room down in the basement, and you go and you bend and, and grab something and start to lift it, and the spine comes back up, and this joint here goes, and it catches. The response in that spot would be like a bonk on the forehead or a bonk on your shin. So you bonk your forehead, how long does it take to get a goose egg, right? I mean, like 30 seconds later, you could have a pretty good sized goose egg. And so in your spine, that goose egg would, it would fill in the space of the actual joint itself. And that joint is filled with all these pain sensing fibers. And so once that happens, if you, if you bend backwards or you bend to the right, that would give you the sharp pain there. The swelling can also fill this space where this bigger nerve is at. And uh, if, that, if it affects that nerve, then it can affect wherever the nerve goes to. So in a little bit, we'll go take a look at the pattern of these nerves. Now, um, most people would think that what would cause a severe back or neck pain flare up would be doing something really heavy. Um, but in my career as a chiropractor, I'm gonna let you know that the most common thing that causes severe neck pain in the neck is a person just plain wakes up with it and they, they can't look to the left or they can't look to the right. Um, there was one time in a two month period, I had three different ladies come in and they had 10 out of 10 neck pain. And I said, what'd you do? And they said, I just put shampoo on my hair in the shower. So little things can cause the severe neck pain. The low back, the most common couple things would be people bend over to pet an animal, pick up a book and they start to come back up and they feel that little click and all of a sudden that starts the process of the swelling. So let's actually come into this room here a little bit or for just a second. And I wanna show you um, the, where we can kind of learn and see where that swelling is affecting. So this is called a facet referral pattern. So the facet joints, those are those 132 joints in the spine. And so this just shows you um, this, this joint right here, it's C5-6 um, approximately anyway. And so if there is swelling in that joint there, this is where it's going to refer out to. So that's a, a pain referral pattern. Down in the low back, you can see that if there's swelling affecting that nerve right there, or the joint right there, it's gonna create that pain in the region there. So now if the actual bigger nerves, so if you wanted to look at this chart and just kind of see which nerves or which joints are affecting the spine, you would search facet referral patterns. Now, if the actual nerve itself is being compressed, that bigger nerve there, then we can look up what's called dermatomes. So D-E-R-M-A-T-O-M-E-S. And that's basically where, where the nerves, these bigger nerves refer down to. So this is the, uh, let's see here, five, four, three. This is the L3 nerve here. And you can see that L3 is gonna shoot pain down into the inside of the thigh. You get down to the L5 nerve and it's gonna cause pain down the back of the leg and down onto the outside of the calf there. And so depending on which structure is, is being pushed on by the swelling, it's gonna create a different pattern of where the pain goes to. Um, so let's come on back in here. So um, as soon as you have this, this sense, you felt a little click or you start to feel a little pain, a lot of people do something that we would say is a really bad idea. And that's that they're like, let's put a heating pad on it and so again, once you realize that the mechanism of what's going on in there is it's acting like a bonk on the forehead with swelling, 
um, or a sprained ankle. One time I sprained my ankle and a minute later there was a, a golf ball size area of swelling in around my ankle. So let's say that a football player sprains their ankle, take them off the field and they instantly put their foot in a bucket of hot water. That area could come out of that, I mean, if they pulled that out of the bucket, 20 minutes later, it could come out the size of a watermelon. And so once we have that little click or you start to get that pinch in your spine, if you put a heating pad on there, you're basically inviting more swelling to come into that area and to start to press on the nerves. Now, the second thing, and so we would say stay away from local heat. The things that are beneficial is to put cold or like an ice pack, making sure not to get an actual ice burn on your skin. So like an ice pack with a, a wet, um, a, like a wet washcloth or a wet paper towel um, in between the, the ice pack and your, and your body um, for 20 minutes out of each hour is what we'd recommend that can decrease pain and it can decrease some of the swelling in around those joints. Um, the second thing that people do that's really bad is they'll have this sharp pain and they think, oh, I should just rest. And in particular, uh, the way that we rest often, if you're sitting on the couch trying to do some Netflix and chill, it puts you in this position of being slouched. So sitting like this, that is really a terrible idea if you've started to have a neck pain flare up. And one of the best ways that I can explain how this affects things is we can think about a normal situation. So if somebody falls asleep on a plane, that joint there is stretched out. Even if that person's totally healthy, if they stay in that position for six or eight hours while they're on this long flight, that area is gonna fill in with swelling. And then when they come up, they're gonna feel this terrible pinch sensation. And that's a totally healthy person. If this area here is in bonk on the forehead mode, goose egg mode, and a person spends just 30 or 40 minutes, that area would fill in with all this extra swelling. When they come back up, the swelling is gonna push on pain sensing fibers inside of the joint, and it's gonna squeeze that bigger nerve there. We don't want either of those. And so in order to avoid that, we're gonna, and then down in the low back too, if, if somebody hurts their low back and they sit on a couch that rounds their back like this, it's taking those joints down in the low back and stretching them out. It might actually feel better for a little bit, but then that swelling builds up in that region. When they go to stand up, they're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't even stand up straight. And that's called antalgia. Antalgia is this painful forward position caused by swelling pushing on nerves. And so what we're gonna recommend you do, if you find yourself in this pinch or crisis type of situation, you're gonna focus on sitting on firm surfaces and you're gonna keep try to keep your spine lined up uh, where you're as tall as possible. So um, think about a, a string from your head to the ceiling and I'm sitting tall. And then if you do have to sit for an extended period of time, we're gonna add in what are called pelvic tilts. With pelvic tilts, you're going to arch your belly forward just until you start to feel any pain. And then you can round the low back backwards, but just up until the point of pain. So people come in in severe back pain and it's just these tiny little movements. Stick the belly out, round it backwards, Oops, starts to pinch, stick it forward and round it backwards. And what we're trying to do there is milk, so to speak, some of the swelling out of the area around those joints. Um, make sure that it doesn't build up around those nerves and then by keeping you as tall as possible, all these joints, none of them are overstretched. So we don't give a, we don't create a space for that swelling to build up. With the neck, if you've got this pinch in the neck, we had a couple patients come in today and their timing was bad. They felt this terrible pinch in the neck. Um, in the neck, the best thing we can recommend there if you have this severe pinch, so this is a person that can't bend to the side, can't look to the side without it causing this severe pinch, we're gonna do what are called head retractions. And this is a movement that most people actively avoid because the description is you're gonna give yourself a double chin. And so essentially, if you feel this pinch here, just to the start of the pain, we're gonna move our head straight backwards where uh, the chin doesn't come up or down at all, but you just move your head straight backwards trying to give yourself a double chin. You'd hold that for five seconds. Just at the very start of where you start to feel the pinchiness, let it relax, and then I'm gonna do another one. And we can do five to 10 of those five second holds every hour or so. And that can, what we're doing there is we're, we're loosening up those joints, we're trying to move the swelling out of that area, and uh, just, just not give this area a chance to build up with swelling. So during the day, that's your main two things, is that you're trying to um, keep your spine lined up, 
you're doing cold for 20 minutes out of each hour in that first 24 to 48 hours. Um, you're doing these gentle pelvic tilts forward and backwards. You can also do some pelvic tilts side to side. So just some very, very gentle, just within your comfort level, just going side to side. And then in general, we'd say just sitting still is not beneficial. So at least once an hour, if you end up with severe pain, I'd recommend that you get up and do some, some just gentle walking around the house. That actually helps to keep the beneficial types of movement and keep the swelling from building up in there. So those are our main strategies during the day. Chiropractors, we are not supposed to give recommendations about actual medicine. So if you want to reach for ibuprofen or leave or Tylenol, that's kind of it's it's your call on that. We just don't give recommendations about that. Um, at night, uh, that presents another obstacle. What should you do at night if you've got this severe pain? Um, your goal at night is to keep your body still lined up as if you're as tall as possible. So let's say some people, when they sleep, they say, I usually sleep face down with my head to the side and then I've got a pillow in here. That's probably not gonna go very well if you have a, a pinch in your neck. And so in general, we would say lying on your back is beneficial. Um, with that, um, we still want, we still want a, a pillow that doesn't tilt your head way forward because that would stretch out the joints and invite some swelling to come into there. So a more thin pillow, uh, often one that has a little bit of extra support underneath the neck can be beneficial. Um, if you've got the severe low back pain, lying on the back on a firm surface is good. If your bed um, has one of these banana divots where your low back drops down and it makes your low back slouched, that's going to invite that swelling to build up there. And so what you can do is uh, basically take like a pillow from your house and you could try, you might find this more comfortable, so you lay on your back and just put a thin, or a thin towel behind your back and that would get the back more in that lined up position. Um, there's not a perfect answer for some of this, but you can try putting a pillow underneath your knees and sometimes that relaxes and just lets the low back relax them. Um, low back, and then sometimes there's this joint called the SI joint. So that's this bigger joint here um, down on the pelvis. So you got the tailbone here. This is called the ilium, so sacroiliac joint. That joint doesn't have very much movement, but sometimes it gets out of whack. And when it does, the thing that people say is, I have a hitch in my get along. And that's a sharp, one-sided, low back pain. Uh, really gives you a jolt, sometimes when the foot comes off the ground. So if you've got a hitch in your get along, um, that's especially a time that you might get some benefit um, by laying on your side when you sleep and uh, having a pillow between the legs. Uh, so it's just, this is kind of a, you know, you just gotta do some trial and error, but by doing that, sometimes that'll take some pressure off of that SI joint and let you wake up feeling better. So, all right, so we went over what you're doing during the day. Again, you're sitting tall, you're doing head retractions. If your neck's um, in that pinchy, bad state, in the low back, you're doing your, your pelvic tilts and you're doing some uh, gentle, very gentle side tilts. Um, let's see here, um, what else was I gonna go over? I guess the last thing I was gonna go over is just um, what sets people up for these more chronic types of problems, uh, or not chronic problems, but what makes these areas more likely to flare up? And then also just for people that are dealing with ongoing types of low back pain, I'm gonna explain a little bit about that. So let's have you come around the corner with me here. And uh, so in our office, we do what's called a uh, motion X-ray study. And uh, now you'll be looking at the screen for a bit here. But go ahead and look at me right now. So in the low back, in the low back, you have five main bones that move. Um, the rib cage starts up here and keeps everything stable. And these joints are supposed to all move with nice smooth movements. Um, past traumas or repeated activities can make some of these joints in the low back, uh, the tissues around them get stiffened up. And so we do what's called a motion x-ray study, and that can show us, is the low back able to move like it's supposed to, or are there some that are stuck? And then if some of these are stuck, then it sets up some of the joints in your low back to have this tipping point into a crisis. And so, let's see here. So this is actually, uh, I, this is actually my spine here, but I, I set it up so that you can see. Here's uh, my low back when I'm just standing there, I'm looking straight away from us. 
So here is, this is my right pelvis, my tailbone in the center, and then we have the five low back bones. The rib cage is where the upper back starts. The darker spots are air and gas bubbles. And so here's where I did my motion study. So I bent to the left, and basically what we're looking for is each of these bones, do they tilt to the, do they move to the side? So we can see moving to the left, moving, yeah. Moving to the left, moving to the left, moving to the left, moving to the left, moving to the left. So all those bones have that nice normal movement. Now, I did a demonstration where I bent to the right, and this is the kind of thing we'll see in people that have ongoing pain. So essentially, again, here's where I was just standing still. Here's where I bent to the left, and you can see this one here is the one that's moving. This one is moving. This one here tilts to the right. So we've got and even this one here. So we have three bones that tilt to the right, but if you look at these bottom three bones, they didn't move at all. And so essentially people come in and they have chronic or ongoing light, right low back pain, and we'll see this exact pattern here where person moves normally to the left. When they go to the right, we find out that the bottom three bones are stiff and stuck. And so in that situation, this is a model here, if these three are stuck, where, where is there more likely to be a problem spot? We would say it would be this one up here. This one's doing more than its share of the work. And when the person moves or they bend over to, uh, try, to try to move something down in the basement, that's the one that's gonna go and have this flare up into severe pain. And so um, it is helpful to understand, we see those abnormal movement patterns. It's like, what actually causes that? Go ahead and look over here, Sherry. Um, the main thing we just explained is that you have all kinds of soft tissues in along your body. So um, if you look over here, we have, we have a lot of muscles actually in along the body and those can get injured by actual traumas or let's say a person is constantly doing a bunch of digging ditches when they're a teenager. Uh, that could cause some actual micro traumas into the muscles and scar tissue in that area. Uh, but what I like to explain is just you have these tissues deeper in along the spine and so we have ligaments on the front and back of each bone. You have ligaments in between the processes that are on the sides and the back of the spine. And then you have the actual um, facet, these facet joints that we talked about earlier. They have a little capsule around them, which is a little sleeve. And then you have the actual discs themselves, which are these fibrous outer rings in a softer center. So if you look over here, um, if we see a spot not moving, we would understand um, essentially, if we looked at any of those soft tissues in the body and they've never been injured, if they've never been injured and we looked at them under a microscope, they would look essentially like that. So that's a, a tissue that can contract and relax. It has normal flexibility. If a, if a body part, a part of your spine gets in an injury, that could cause some actual tears, um, injuries deep within those structures. Other people don't have a major trauma, but they've done these repeated stressful things on their body, repeated movements, and that would cause some micro traumas, these smaller injuries. Um, your body is going to heal those spots, but what it does is it adds bits of scar tissue. And you can think of that as being like pieces of Velcro deep within these structures, deep within your body. And so that scar tissue, its goal is to stabilize that area, but people can picture scar tissue. Uh, scar, scar tissue is tougher, less flexible, and it can actually decrease blood flow into regions. And ultimately, we would say scar tissue which is what would take a bone that's supposed to be able to move normally and would seize it up, like we see on this pattern here where these, these three bones at the bottom don't move to the right. And so if somebody comes in and we do one of these motion studies and we see that this, these three bones aren't moving to the right, then our goal is to improve that motion so that the bones in the low back all have normal movement. And so after our care, we would expect that this person is now able to move to the right like they're supposed to be able to. And as a result, each of the individual joints within the low back aren't stressed out. They each have a normal amount of a job to do when the person goes through movement and less likelihood that there's swelling in there. So overall, that was kind of a long explanation of how a severe back pain, a severe neck pain episode start and the strategies that you should do if it happens um, to try to minimize it going into a full crisis mode. Again, uh, I'm here at Compass Chiropractic and as of today with this coronavirus crisis, um, chiropractors, we are open and uh, just 
viewing our role as trying to take the pressure off of the emergency rooms and the urgent cares if people have one of these crises. So ideally this gives you some, some valuable things that you can do at home. Um, as of today, if something flared up and you needed to give us a call, um, our number over here is 309-1217 and we would be doing our best to help you. Um, well, I guess with chiropractic, our goal is to restore and improve movement in those spots that aren't moving right and decrease the swelling that's pushing on the nerves and causing all that pain for you. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Sherry, are you able to see, did we get any questions or comments as this was going on? Nope. You can say hi to Sandy. Hey, Sandy. Good to see you. So um, hope you're doing well over there. And uh, yeah, these are some valuable strategies. If you have friends that say, oh my gosh, now my back hurts on top of all that's going on, make sure to share this with them so that they do the right things in the first 24 to 48 hours. So thanks for watching and stay safe and healthy out there.